Yo, what up, tubers? Back for some more drafting on Arena. A little bit more Baldur's Gate. Uh, I'll probably swap off between this and some Kamigawa drafts. While the Kamigawa drafts are still available and up. Uh, yeah, we'll jump into our pick. Hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Opened a Nira Wild Mage. Not very good. We can just skip that and go straight to the good cards. We have, like, the Hunting Party, the Soldiers of the Watch, Sewer Plague, and Genasi Rabble Rouser. I like just taking the Genasi Rabble Rouser here. Um, yep, can't really beat this as a two drop. I do like Plague quite a bit, but I think these type of cards are just way too good. These, especially the Rabble Rouser, the double team cards have proven to uh, proven to be all stars. So I think I'm going to take that here over anything else. Only awkward thing is I guess I'm passing a couple of other red cards, but. Do you think the Rabble Rouser is a fantastic first choice? Very nice second pick here. Wow, we have a Scanos, Dragon Vassal. Love this card. Gets out of hand very easily. Meteor Golem, very good. Priest of Ancient Lore, quite nice. Prowler, Ghast, another Rabble Rouser. I don't like the Priest of Ancient Lore a little bit more than the Rabble Rouser, but I might try something else here. Let's just... Can you build mono color decks in this format? What if we try to force like a mono red deck? What if we just take a second Genasi Rabble Rouser here and say all in? Is that a viable strategy? Because I'm well, ah. I was going to say I might try it, but Skullport Merchant is maybe a little bit too good to pass up. Minthara is quite nice as well. I mean, there is that Valor Singer I could just take if we want to stick to Mono Red, but... Merchant is such a better card. I guess Merchant is a little bit worse in... Maybe a super aggressive deck, perhaps? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to the plan. I'm gonna take the Valor Singer here, third pick. It is not the best card in the pack, but... I'm going to see if maybe we can try to do some mono red nonsense as we pick up another Valor Singer here. Perfect. Let's just try to cut off the red cards as hard as we can. Have a little bit of fun. Two Rabble Rousers, two Valor Singers. Let's make like a bad lock constructed deck of sorts. As we pass another Minthara here. Mm. That's okay though. Black White's a little bit far away from red anyways. If we're sticking to Mono Red, we take Cell Sword or Pilgrim's Eye. That's really weak. The best card here is just what? Blessed Hippogriff? By a lot. Yeah, darn it. Okay, I mean, I don't mind having taken the two Valor Stingers, but Hippogriff is like the best common in the format. And if we're seeing it fifth pick, that's a pretty big sign, I think. It's just way too much better than any of the Mono Red choices we could take, so. Sad, but correct. Blessed Hippogriff, get in the deck. And then we follow that up with what? I guess an Icewind Stalwart? A lot of green cards in this pack. But yeah, the Icewind is pretty good. Don't have any flicker synergy with any of our creatures yet. But it isn't hard to find a couple of cards that just make this worth playing. If we don't get any cards that get value when they enter the battlefield or whatever... And we'll go ahead and cut it, but given this is still pack one, there's no no reason to believe that we won't find something good. And in a pinch, you can give something, what, pseudo-vigilance? Since these perpetually gain the removal of their double-team ability, or rather they perpetually lose double-team, I should say, I don't... Right, you can't flicker them and have them regain double-team because it's the same card, technically. Aggro's been working out for me in this format, though. As we get a Rally Maneuver here. We passed one of these earlier in uh, a Valor Singer pack, I think, but nice to get one now over this Unexpected Allies. Makes sense. Yep, no consideration.
Nice. Eighth pick Warcaller is real juicy. And even if the Warcaller wasn't here, we'd have the Devoted Paladin as an okay pickup. A couple more green cards going around. Warcaller has just proven time and time again that it is one of the most disgusting uh, early plays you can make in this format. Wheeling that Null Hunting Party, kind of crazy. Remember, this was in our initial pack. Okay. I don't know what that is, but... Or I don't know why it's still there, I should say, but, uh... Well, pretty happy to have it. So I need to find some more combat tricks. The nice thing about all these double-team creatures is that they, uh... They bolster your creature count, in a sense, you know? The nice thing about the Ravel Rouser, man, it's just two mana. And it's a 1-3. It comes down super early, and it's hard to effectively block it either early or late, really, as it is pumpable. I haven't had good success with this card. Pretty sure it's just not super good. It's okay. I mean, it's kind of like a two-mana draw a creature and maybe get in for some extra damage, I guess. The fact that it's a sorcery is, I guess, the, the big thing that pulls it back. But then again, you do need to cast it main phase anyways to be able to attack with the creature. This was the pack that we took the Hippogriff from, so wield one of the only two cards we were going to play out of that anyways. No big deal. And Yowza, what a pack number two we open. Wand of Orcus, Lulu Fantastic, Red Dragon, Innkeeper, Fireball, Dragonfire, and another Rabble Rouser. I think this has got to be Lulu. It's a weird pick, maybe, but man, I think Lulu is one of the better three drops that you can get in this format. It's not super aggressive itself, it only has one power as a baseline, but so many times, like your opponent plays Lulu, then they just play any other creature, it gains flying, and all of a sudden, you know, you're kind of on the back foot. So I like Red Dragon, I like the Fireball, but I think those are secondary to Lulu. Okay, next pick, probably just a Hobgoblin Captain here, really easily. Another good two drop. Not much else to say. Maybe we wheel one of these other six mana cards, but it's not like we're uh, terribly worried about getting those. Wow, look at this third pick. Another Lulu, Liara, another Hobgoblin, a giant Fire Beetle, and then both Warriors and Ranger Squadron if we wanted it. Is Liara better here than Lulu number two? I actually don't think it is. Liara's great, but again, Lulu has just been so, so good. Okay, next pick. Probably end, gonna end up taking, I think, another two drop here, as we want to just maximize the two drops that we can pick up. Giant Fire Beetles is another pretty good three drop, though, if we wanted to take that instead. The Menace on it, really, really, really nice. But I feel like the two drops are a little bit more important, though this one's not that good. No, nah, you know what? I guess I'll take the Beetle. There are so many better two drops in this format. The beetle has at least evasion and can draw an extra card. Let's take another one, I guess. Another beetle here. Kind of loading up on three drops, but that's not the worst. This is basically just a mono creature deck at the moment. There we go. Fireball and weaponry. I'm going to go with the fireball over the weaponry here, I think. A lot of blue cards in this pack, but the Fireball can deal with larger creatures, and it's a little aggressive. Plus three, plus one, or up to two creatures can't block. Probably not good. I think the uh, equipment here is probably fine. We have a bunch of Flyers and a couple of Menace creatures, so... That doesn't seem awful. Alright, clearly nothing there for us. Another Fireball on the wheel. Okay, if, I mean, if... If my top end sp uh, spells are removal, that's not the worst case scenario, right? I mean, I'm guessing this Null Hunting Party is going to be closer to a 4 mana spell than anything else. So, cards I'm on the lookout for. Um, another War Caller would be great, and then just 
cheap interaction. So some humiliations. I mean, we passed a couple good removal spells like that dragon fire or whatever, but another war caller, some more cheap creatures. Ideally more double team creatures on two mana. More rabble rousers or some of those two ones in white would be good. Uh, what else? Anything else that can give like first strike? I guess we could get some white combat tricks. We have Hippogriff. I suppose that's another combat trick that would be good. Wield, Spiked Pit Trap, and the 6-mana Dragon. Don't think we'll be taking those. Oh, you know what? The double Lulu makes the Icewind Stalwart a little bit better now, doesn't it? Yeah. Lulu just says when it enters the battlefield, you get the boon, so... Flickering the Lulu means we can reset it. Wield the Hobgoblin Captain. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, this is looking good. Feel like feels like I in the start of this format kept drafting like green black or like five color rampy stuff, and now I've just kind of moved into the red white aggro strategy. <laughs> Okay, all playables here if we want to. I think we'll take the Immolator to follow up with the double Lulu. That makes a lot of sense to me too. And we will move on to pack number three. Hope to get some goods. Oh God. I mean, you have to take it. I don't have any fixing right now, but this is one of the top cards in the format. We're losing out on a Red Dragon, another Liara, Priest. I don't see myself passing this Minsk and Boo. Right, I have no treasure production right now. If we had taken the Improvised Weaponry over the Fireball, we'd have one Treasure Maker, but... Okay, let's see if we can make this work. Oh, lordy. Well, we can't take that one. That sucks. So there is a fixer here in the form of Pilgrim's Eye, but we also just have a dragon fire. And I would legitimately rather take dragon fire here and just keep on solid two color than play the Minskin Boo. That being said, oddly, we don't have that many white cards. Like, we could, in theory, Take a green card. I'm going to take the dragon fire. But I don't know about that. There's another pilgrim's eye. There's a steadfast unicorn. All right. At this time, at this point, I will take the pilgrim's eye, I guess. We will the hobgoblin last time. Unicorn is nuts, but the planeswalker is too good. Notably, there was also a, uh, a red dragon there, which would have also allowed for splashing. So I guess if we can pick up some red dragons... Then we can get some extra splash potential. Another Icewind Stalwart. We're not going to play that, are we? I guess it's maybe better than Icewind Allies card or whatever this is. Unexpected Allies. Jeez. Okay, we need to take Humiliation here. But lots of good playable cards first. We would play all five of these cards, I think. But the removal is just a little bit too clutch. Good pickup. Wow, another Dragon's Fire. Holy smokes. Okay, I'm in. This deck is turning into something really, really good. We went from such little interaction to now picking up two Dragon Fire, Humiliation, Minimus Containment if we want to. I mean, I want the Axe here as well. Yeah, I think the Axe as a trick is better. So, and this is going to feel really weird. I think the right play now is to cut the Minskin Boo and cut the Pilgrim's Eye. And just do this. Straight up, disgusting red-white aggro as we get a Battlecry Goblin 8th pick. Yeah. I think this is the play. Maybe cut one Fireball and run 16 lands also seems reasonable. Don't think we'll be running that. No regrets. I think the Minskin Boo was a good pickup. We lost on Liara and a couple of other good cards, but this had super high upside. And we could still play it if we really wanted to. The overall power level would get higher, 
um, but the um, consistency would get lower. And I think with a deck like this, we would just rather have high consistency. So this is probably going to be, what, 10? Do we want to play this? 10 mountains. Maybe like 6 planes. I need to make a couple of cuts still. This is 25 cards. At least one cut. Maybe two stalwarts is unnecessary, especially since they're on the splash. This deck came together real well, though. I guess this card's not that good, is it? When this dies, seek a creature with mana value 3 or less. That gains haste and sack at end of turn. Yeah. Um, in which case, what card would we add? We do want 16 lands, right? I think so. I suppose we could just another run, ran, uh, run another random 2-drop. Iron Golem's, like, okay with Lulu, I guess. Could just play Pilgrim's Eye. All of these things are okay. So what's the downside of running 17 lands? Because I guess with two Lulus, we can always just discard a land to Lulu. Maybe 17 lands is fine. Okay. And then go like 7, 10. Something like that. I guess I could go 10, 6, and Pilgrim's Eye. Pilgrim's Eye is good with double Lulu, too, right? Just small decisions. I mean, I don't think it really matters drastically one way or another. Yeah, I guess we can go Pilgrim's Eye and 16 lands. It's probably okay. I mean, our curve is below, under 3... I'm alright with that. Alright, we're going to submit this and we will go to round one, but uh, I think you could build this a couple different ways. Thinks I could still splash the Minskin Boo, for example, but we'll go to the next, or first round and see how we do. Stay tuned. Okay. <clears throat> Off to round one we go with our apparently mono red deck, but this looks like a pretty good mono red hand. Turn 1 Shambling Ghast is quite annoying. Hopefully they don't have a Deadly Dispute to sacrifice and just kill our War Caller immediately. Of course they do, because why wouldn't they? No <clears throat> Notably, this is a huge difference because we're also on the draw. If we were on the play, we at the very least get to uh, immediately enable the Genasi Rabble Rouser. Why wouldn't they? Eh, our hand still looks pretty nice, though. Pilgrim's Eye. That I can live with. Let's see if they grab another swamp here, or if they grab a third color, perhaps. Ooh, a blue source. Well, let's just start getting our beetles online, too.
We would like to draw a few more lands. But getting stuck on three here wouldn't be the worst. Priest of Ancient Lore. Okay. A steadfast paladin. Alright, I'm fine with that. Good in the land. Mm. I think I'm okay just attacking. No pre combat dragon fire or whatever. Just let them make a double block on the rabble rouser if they want to, or double block on the fire beetle. Or no blocks. I'm okay with that as well. Interesting. All right, well, let's just play out another Beatles then. I mean, they get to attack me for two lifelink back, but I think that's okay. Ah. I see. Yeah, that is not a good card. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm going to trade with the Paladin then. And I assume they're going to go ahead and immediately pop off maybe my Beetle or something. <laughs> Though they might preserve the treasure. Yeah, that ain't great. I don't know if we want to just play this out end of turn for extra damage. I think I'm going to. I'll offer the trade first, though I don't expect them to take it, of course. And then we'll just fire away. Play out our other rabble rouser, say go. Still have five cards in their hand. Mm. Sure, so we're gonna take five here. Yep. We still have to attack. We don't really mind if they make some blocks. So I could just pump once and then let the trade happen. I think that's okay. Could also use the axe to give it double strike, but I think we want to get the beetles online. Hmm. Not loving it though. Okay, another ghast. That's really annoying for us as well, isn't it? Well, we need to get this Null Hunting Party online, so let's attack with our Menace creature and see if they want to block. They might just take two damage and not care about it, because they can apply pressure as well. Yep. And that's fine, that means we get to play out the Null. I mean, if they don't have a removal spell for the Knoll, maybe we're okay. They do, in fact, have a removal spell. Yeah, that'll probably end it for us. We take four, we go to five. Oh, okay. Well, that is forced damage every turn. So let's think about this. How do we push through? Go 
go battle cry goblin haste haste attack uh, that's not great though hmm So we could also just uh, equip the dueling to our beetle. Yeah, maybe this is the best play. Equip the dueling to the beetle. Smack in for four. In post combat, play the battle cry goblin. Because they have to lose at least one life with the black market connection. Okay, so they're just going to make a treasure, that's fine. Oh, does that kill us? Uh, that's very close, that means we have to do a lot of chumping. Oh, you know what? If they attack with everything, we will win. Oh, do it. They should attack with everything here, I think. Yeah, that's perfect. So we go eat, chump. And if they don't have anything here... I get to double strike the beetle, hit him for... 8, and then the market finishes them off. Nice. Got him. Ooh, yeah, baby. Let's go. <laughs> uh. And that's the way we get him. Very good, very good. Okay. From the brink of despair. I don't think their play was bad, for the record. But just kind of got a lot of damage out of nowhere, so that worked out very nicely. And we are 1-0. Let's go to game two. On the draw here for game number two with a get god i hate the stupid dragons going in front of me every single freaking game prosperous innkeeper so if i don't dragon fire that now it's probably going to gain them too much life also the hobgoblin captain doesn't attack into it very well anyways so i think that play is all right oh good just a turn three oh your minotark not what you want to see. Well, I mean, that might just be game over, right? Now, maybe they don't have any blue sources or whatever, but... The 4-5 on turn 3 is going to be pretty hard for us to deal with. And there's a blue source for them. Okay, let's pump an attack. We have to blow up, blow up their blue source. Don't have a choice. But we can basically just concede this game pretty soon. Obviously, two for wanting myself by leaving back the Valor Singer and trying to double block the Oyamina Tark is not going to win us the game. We need to somehow try to race the. Oh, well. Let's just disregard all of that. I mean, I'm going to try to win here, but. This is pretty low odds. We need to somehow deal 11 points of damage to them next turn, and that's through them having a bunch of food and stuff. Oh, maybe they just have... Okay, so I'm assuming we're dead here to the plus three plus three. I don't think I can win if I block, so I'm just going to no block and assume that they have something. But 
If they don't, maybe we can win. Like if they go for Lenorm, that would be lethal. That works too. Does that have Trample? Wow, that was a really risky play for them. Interesting. Okay. So if I had blocked the Oyamina Tarak, I guess they can just sack both treasures to gain six life. Yeah. The only way we're going to win that is if they made some big mistake. I don't think I could throw away my flyer. I needed to keep all of my damage. The worst part about that is that it's seven mana to do the full combo with the uh, axe, right? Two to give double strike, three to cast, and two to equip. So even if we did get another turn, I was one mana short of being able to do the full shebang. Kind of hard to beat a turn three, four, five hexproof, though. And even if it didn't have, have hexproof, we were going to have to make some weird blocks. Looks like they had the uh, choose your weapon the whole time, though, to, to blow us out if we did make some weird double block. Go, go next. On to game number three. We have been put on the play and gifted a decent creature curve out hand. So turn two Ravel Rouser to try to immediately get the double team value. And then I guess now turn three Beetle to start getting that online. Maybe turn four Battle Cry plus two drop. opponent here could have undersimplify, but still going to go for it. Oh, and if they don't, then we're just going to run them over. Well, that is certainly not good enough here. Did really want to draw a land there, but... Hmm. I guess I'll get another Menace creature online. <laughs> Darn it. I tried to pause in time, but it didn't work. Whew. Excuse me. Alright, so even if they do not attack... Oh, that's a good draw. We still get to attack with both of our Menace creatures here. So I'm going to play out the Pilgrim's Eye, grab a Plains. Although it's awkward, though. We, we do need more red sources, but... I'm going to attack with both of our giant Fire Beetles. If they double block one, great. If they don't, that's great too. But yeah, given our hand, we just want to make our land drop so we can dump out all of these creatures and then swing out. Uh, they're going to gain two life, I guess? Sure. Okay. Nice. More land is good. Let's attack for just one in the air. I did not expect that. You know what? I'm actually going to do this. Because now instead I can keep my Pilgrim's Eye alive and play out the Hippogriff. Hm. I mean, if they just play a big flyer, we're going to have a problem. But for now, I think we're doing all right. Go Singer. Singer. Um, and let's start attacking with a 4-2 Beetle as well. Try to clear off the ground. By pumping it to 4, they can't block it very well. No matter what. We at least get to trade with one thing. Because of the Menace. Yep, that's fine. We'll trade for Spy. I could also go aggro and put all of the dam or put all of the pump on the pilgrim's eye, but again, given our hand, I think we want to try clearing off the board as much as possible. And I mean, it might even be right just to run out both rabble rousers and threaten a bunch of big pumps. 
Because if we can hit our land number six, we can triple pump the Rabble Rousers. And with three of them, we'd be able to uh, have three four power creatures in essence. It's funny, our hand is nothing, just bet random creatures. Alright, looks like they're gonna lock down the beetle, that's fine. So we get to double pump the pilgrims out here if we want to. Oh, I kinda wanna double block with Valor Singers. But now we just have a really good attack since they did that, right? Sure. You can get your water weird trigger, but I don't think I care about that. I mean... We can go Battlecry Goblin... Haste... Pump up Valor... Pump up Valor... I like attacking with all here. Their only good blocker is the Juvenile Mist Dragon. Take 10. Then I get to play a one mana null hunting party. Alright. There were probably some better iterations of uh, Ump, but kind of like that. Okay. I mean, once again, we just attack with everything, and... So Valor Singers are gonna go on, I guess... We put one on... Oh, yeah, no, it doesn't matter, right? There's no way they can survive. Oh, we can also give our... Yep, other Goblin Haste here. Doesn't matter. Could really just click buttons randomly and we would get through for lethal here, I think, right? Oh, did I? I clicked the wrong creature. I lied. I could not randomly kick, click buttons. Wait. No, I'm just very stupid. Okay, I I psyched myself out. For some reason, I, th I thought by pumping the wrong creature. Okay, don't listen to me. That was way over lethal. The beetle alone made it lethal, which is why we pumped it up. Okay. We had so much lethal, my mind reverted back to us not having lethal. I don't know. Do as I say, and not as I do. I think that's the phrase. One that certainly applies to uh, that position right there. Okay, on the draw. Again. I mean, I guess our deck is... Pretty much just mono creatures, but... Ah, see? Being on the draw here is so miserable. And they have the turn one war color, so they get to start punching us. Now they're gonna have, like, the turn two rabble rouser with haste, you know? Hobgoblin with haste, that's pretty gross too. Man, that's brutal. If they just randomly have another three power creature to give haste, that would be problematic. I think I'm off. I think I'm supposed to offer the trade, or rather, I'm supposed to take the trade that they're offering. Even though I'm throwing away a double team, I'm not going to be able to block the hobgoblin go anytime soon. So, surprised they didn't give their pilgrims eye haste. Probably means we are in a world of hurt next turn. Some bigger creatures that they want to perpetually give haste. Hmm. 
And it wasn't the Basilisk. So what was it? I guess our hope here is that they just have a bunch of expensive spells in their hand that they can never cast. Didn't expect them to double block there. Alright, let's go ahead and get the Immolator online. Okay, here come the Owlbears, right? Would be even worse if they just have a bunch of, like, giants and stuff and they get to six mana. So plan next turn is just attack with both and then play out the null hunting party. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to take at least four. Unless they get scared for some reason and decide not to attack. So I'm going to take six? No, five. Not six. All right, take it all. Oh, this is a dragon too, so we can... In theory, we might be able to pump up the Immolator and then Dragon Fire for four. But I'm guessing we're probably just going to be dead here. Kind of needed to draw land there to be able to double spell, potentially, and with the War Caller. I'm assuming we're just going to get another fat, hasty creature played against us, and then we'll just take way too much damage. I only have one War Caller in this deck, right? Definitely need more. Card is just such an all-star in these red aggressive decks. Yikes. Yep, Basilisk Caller is also a huge one. So if they just equip with that Owlbear and gain four life, that's also going to be game over, effectively. Hmm. Okay. And now that it has Trampled Death Touch, so... Blocking it is just forever miserable. Yeah. Alright, GG's. Can't really beat that. Maybe with a few more lands, we could, like, Valor Singer up our Dragonborn and then pump up the Dragonborn and use the fire on the Owlbear, but we were already way too far behind, so way too much work to come back from that, and we were just kind of just dead next turn. All right, hopefully we can be on the play this time with a turn one War Caller of our own. On the play, but no turn one War Caller, but good curve out hand. Get the double teamer online first. That's annoying, but at least we can attack into it. How are we drawing so many planes? What the heck? Sheesh. How many planes do I have in the deck? Seven? Six? My 17 lands or my untapped isn't working. I guess I will never know. Let's see. Close this out. Untapped. Uh, yeah, no blocks. Vampire spawn to drain me for two. Annoying. That's a great draw. Poking for two. 
Get another menace creature. Play out the menace creature and hold up the triers. I know it's Patriars, but I'm going to call it Patriars, and there's nothing you can do about it. Alright, Overlay says I have... yeah. two. I have six planes in the deck, and ten mountains, and we've drawn four of our planes. Yuck. Another spawny, hmm? Hey, there's a mountain. Okay, so we can... Stinger, pump up one of the beetles. Hobgoblin here. <clears throat> so currently they can't activate the uh, specialize on the Shadow Heart because I need to be at 10 life, right? I lied. A player has to be at 13 or less life. I messed up. For some reason I thought that was 10 or less life. So if I had realized that, I probably would have hold held up the Humiliation instead. But this is not the end of the world. Now they might get a life linker here, but... I can deal with that. Yeah, but that was a mistake. Whoopsies. This is why you read the card. Alright, so they went with the white version. Which means they're going to get a 2-2. Two, two. I'll no block here. I'll go to 7, then they'll poke me to 6. Get a 2-2. Two, two. Hmm. That's a decent draw. So let's see... Well, we do need to attack with at least one creature this turn. Is there any way I can attack with three? I don't think so. I'm pretty darn concerned here, but let's make the attack, and then I can play out the hunting party and use the humiliation on the shadow heart. I guess we need to do it now before they untap with the merchant. Yeah, not holding up the humiliation on that turn kind of sucked. Oof, Shambling Ghast is also really bad for us here. Yeah, that's probably game over. I guess we run out the land so that we can uh, double pump. I'm not sure it would have mattered, but again, allowing them to flip that was really bad. What do we need to draw? What can we draw? You know what we haven't drawn? We have two Lulus in the deck, and I don't think we've ever seen one of them. I'm wrong, so be it, but... 
There are two Lulus in the deck. Yeah, they're gonna sack their Shambling Ghast. Kill the Hob, draw a card. Looks like they might be a little bit flooding, though. Okay, well, maybe there's a chance yet. Need to attack. And again, they don't have a good block on these right now. So they don't have any way to one for one. That is an awful sign for us, but I have to go for it. If they make this block, I have to put the merchant first and try to eat it. And assume they're going to use some kind of trick. Hmm. That might mean they don't have a trick if they're going for... If they were considering blocking the 2 3. We'll find out in a second. Okay, they just had cast down. Good beats. They still take 5. I'm not dead on board or anything. And what they can do here is they can attack with the Soldiers of the Watch, get the double team, I go for a block, they sack it to the Merchant, and then they replay it out. Alright, well if they're just going to make this attack, then we block the 2-2 instead. Okay. So two cards in hand. Wow, that's a good draw. Hmm. I think I still attack here. Except now I attack with the Valor Singer instead, maybe? Yeah. Shouldn't have pre-combat played the goblin for the record, but... There is a chance yet! Oh no. They're looking at their graveyard. Don't do it. Okay. So they're gonna attack with everything and then try to drain me out with the vampire spawn. Dang it. Okay. So I don't die here, right? Target creature. Yeah, so we block here. Target creature gains first strike, so it doesn't matter what I target, and then the other one gains lifelink. So we stay at one. Still need to top deck something then. Oh man, that is actually really close to lethal. Play it, pump, attack. They block, they take three, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow. Pump, attack with all. Three, six, seven. Damn. That goblin was very close to lethal.
Was that three cast downs from them, by the way? No, that was two. Yeah, you know what? So, it turns out that... Uh, that turn that I uh, didn't hold up Humiliation for their creature might have cost us the game. Because we were too short of lethal there. And they got a free 2-2 out of the deal from me letting them uh, specialize on that one turn. Okay, so we need to top deck another spell again. And that ain't gonna do it. Alright, good beats. Dang it. Yeah, I think I threw that. Would have been close. I mean, their draw was pretty good, but we had an opportunity there. And then I got a little bit aggressive on that turn that I attacked when I drew the rally maneuver or whatever it's called. Since they had another removal spell. Okay, two and three. I thought this deck was pretty good. Another classic red-white aggro deck. I mean, a couple of the games... I think two of the games we lost, our opponent went turn one war color on the play, right? We had some good removal, though. We had double dragon fire, humiliation. Never really saw a Lulu, but... Red, white, Baldur's Gate. There you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. I do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you back tomorrow for some more drafting. Maybe Kamigawa again.